great to see all of you here. I'm um, excited to see so many experienced and thoughtful people from the financial industry interested in blockchains and, uh, and also our work and how to take uh, digital assets to the next level. So a quick intro about us. We are the leading um, Web3 infrastructure provider powering the vast majority of DeFi, blockchain games, and now starting to power the, the most banks uh, with something called the CCIP. So far, the system, the Chainlink system, has processed over eight and a half trillion dollars worth of transaction value securely over the four plus years that it's been live on, on production. The thing that we're offering with the greatest amount of adoption to the capital markets is uh, something called CCIP and the Chainlink abstraction layer. So the Chainlink abstraction layer solves the problem of connecting to blockchains efficiently with one integration without having to integrate with hundreds of blockchains. CCIP, which is used in the abstraction layer, also solves the problem of connecting multiple bank chains together into one network of chains that can properly work together and share liquidity and share access between the clients and users of each respective chain. This is what we've recently done work on with SWIFT, um, many other banks, many great market infrastructures like the DTCC, Euroclear and others, where we basically showed that both of these things are eminently possible for existing bank infrastructure. So firstly, we proved that you could take SWIFT messages, existing bank infrastructure and systems, and trigger transactions on both public and private chains without ever having to integrate with those chains which means that you could use your existing systems to integrate with hundreds of chains without ever having to integrate directly onto those chains. The second thing that we proved is that you could properly connect multiple blockchains together so that their user bases could transact with each other, which solves the very traditional and fundamental problem of liquidity and the ability for applications to gain access to their users. The fundamental problem uh, takes these two forms. Uh, problem number one is, how do I as a bank integrate with hundreds of different chains? My first option is to manually integrate with hundreds of chains. Manually integrating with hundreds of chains is not going to be feasible. We have uh, teams of over 500 people in our ecosystem integrating chains. They can hardly keep up um, and get access to the relevant documentation, core developers, and so on. So the ability for banks to integrate into hundreds of chains and then eventually into the thousands of chains because every single bank will have its own chain just like every single bank has its own database and its own website and its own mobile app. So every bank will have a chain that represents that bank. And all those chains will need to interact with each other and transact with each other in order for anything on any one of those chains to become useful just like the internet. Because in the internet world, you don't just make your own intranet and then have everyone come onto your intranet. You join the internet, and you join the internet through something called TCP IP, which is a messaging and data transfer protocol that basically forms the internet out of many disparate various technologies. And this is what CCIP does. CCIP is a global messaging standard, an open source standard, that allows different chains to connect into a single internet of contracts that is hyper-connected and easy to integrate in from your existing bank systems. This once again has two very big benefits. Firstly, ease of integration into hundreds of chains goes from hundreds of chains to one integration. And the ability for whatever chain you do have to be connected to your counterparties efficiently so that any real world asset, stable coin, or any other product that goes live on your chain or their chain now has access to global liquidity and markets. If you don't solve this problem, then you're going to be in a siloed island. It's going to be like telling people, in order to work on my bank, you have to go on my version of the internet. It's like my website will only work on my internet. That never ever happened, and I really doubt highly that it'll ever happen here. So what's extremely likely is that there will be massive amounts of chains because the cost of making a chain is going down and the complexity of making a chain is going down and the speed and throughput goes up um, as you control your own chain. So every bank I talk to is making actually multiple chains. If those chains aren't connected, you once again don't have liquidity, you don't have access to the other um, counterparties that have their own chains. It's a very fundamental problem that's inescapable. So if you make a chain or you make a real world asset on a chain, 
and that chain is not connected to your counterparties, frankly, you might as well not have done it because it's gonna be like living on your own island while the whole rest of the world transacts in, in the global uh, marketplace. This is one of the first and most fundamental problems that CCIP solves. It gives banks, asset managers, hedge funds, uh, market infrastructures, everybody a single global standard similar to TCP IP for the internet. So just like TCP IP formed the internet out of multiple different internet technologies by combining them into a single internet, CCIP combines multiple blockchain technologies into a single internet of contracts so that whatever chain you decide to use, that chain can still be usable on other people's infrastructures and within other people's chains. The second big problem that uh, Chainlink CCIP solves is actually the ability to send value and to send a message. So both of these problems are quite important. So yes, you want to transmit value, but you actually want to also transmit instructions about what the value is about and in CCIP, CCIP's case, what the value will be able to do. One of the most powerful features is actually the ability to stay in your system or in your chain, send a token to another chain, but add instructions to that token so that when it reaches the destination chain, it can actually affect an event. This means you can send a token, tell the token, use this smart contract, and you never need to go to that chain. You never need to make a wallet on that chain. You never need to integrate with that chain. You never need to learn that chain. All you need to do is use a system that takes your token, sends it to that chain, and then when it reaches that chain, enable it to transact in the relevant smart contract by not only putting the token on the chain, but putting the token in the contract which you would like to use. So this is an extremely important and value-added feature that is another big reason why people like SWIFT, the DDCC, um, Euroclear, many banks are, are particularly interested in, in CCIP. One example of, of how all this works is the creation of a real-world asset, let's say a gold, a gold asset, a real-world gold asset. So yes, you can make your tokenized real-world gold coin, but then you need to inject all kinds of information into it. You need to inject proof of reserves, proving that there is actually gold backing the coin. You need to add identity to it to comply with various regulations so the coin can be moved between different chains and accepted on the destination chain. You might need to update the coin with the price of the asset, of the underlying asset, so that it can settle on a daily basis and people can know what their coin is worth. And this needs to happen when the asset is formed. Great, you formed the asset. That's a great piece of progress. Now you want the asset to be purchased. In order for the asset to be purchased, it needs to be connected to buyers. To be connected to buyers, it needs to be connected to the environments where they are, which is in this world, other chains. CCIP then takes your real world asset with all this important information added to it, sends it to this other chain where your buyer has purchased the asset. But the problem doesn't stop there because you also need to keep the asset updated. So the whole value of um, blockchains from an efficiency point of view is the creation of a golden record. And a golden record needs to stay golden. In order for it to stay golden, whether it's on blockchain A, blockchain B, blockchain C, blockchain D, blockchain Z, whatever blockchain, it still needs to be a golden record that's consistently updated with all these important points, whether it's about reserves, nav, price, whatever. And this is the other thing that CCIP and Oracle Networks in our work does, is it not only creates the real world asset, not only moves the real world asset, but it keeps the real world asset a golden record, which is usable and attractive to further counterparties, which is what you want from these more advanced blockchain assets in order for them to, tr to achieve their true value. The final thing where CCIP shines and which no other bridge technology has is the common idea in your world of risk management. The idea of risk management in blockchain technology and bridges is not so prevalent. Risk management uh, really doesn't exist right now in blockchain technology or bridges because they just allow anything to happen. But in the banking world, allowing anything to happen is usually a very bad idea because there's a lot of things that can happen that are very, very bad. And on blockchains, it's actually worse to make anything you want happen because they're very hard to reverse. So the risk management network within CCIP is where you can 
encode all kinds of risk policies, risk parameters, access control policies, multi-signature policies, basically every condition that you would want to encode in relation to your token moving or being accessible or inaccessible in order to manage your risk according to your worldview of security and risk is something that's baked into CCIP and configurable to allow you to not only move the assets, not only keep the assets updated, but if anything changes with the assets or any dimension of risk appears, for that to be taken account and managed by the system properly. This is something we're already working on with many top banks. Um, from the SWIFT work and the, the, the work with many of the people in that um, POC, which we're, we're working on bringing to the following stages if we can. On to separate work with great banks like ANZ, who you'll hear from in a few minutes, where this entire process was put into action. So together with ANZ, we were able to technically help them take um, the New Zealand dollar, convert that to Australian dollar into an Australian stable coin created by ANZ, send that from their chain to another chain where it was exchanged for uh, reef credit, which is a type of uh, green financial product. And then that green financial product, which I consider to be a real world asset, was then moved back onto the chain from which the stable coin was used to pay for it. And all this was done in a seamless, efficient way, both across currency and across chain settlement transaction, enabling the use of a stable coin, as well as the use of the real world asset created by ANZ. So this is all happening now. Um, I was just talking before the talk how the legal world is now starting to get to a place where there is clarity on how to do these transactions. And in my experience, once that clarity appears, the amount of demand to do these types of transactions is only rapidly increasing. And the ability to do these transactions, I think, will be a very big determining factor of the success of various firms, similarly to how the ability to interact with the internet and to transact over the internet and to have a website and to have email was a big determining factor when those technologies appeared and once they became clear enough in how they were used and once they had enough counterparties using them. So I think there's been a lot of progress made already and we're excited to share the, the rest of it with you.